Hi, Leo. Welcome to your December 2019 astral update. It's Serena here. So yes, this is a bit um, overdue. And that's because I had one heck of a flu slash cold that I have been recovering from. Pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm over the hump but I may sound a little bit stuffed up, so please bear with me. Most of the transits of December have not occurred yet, so as I record this on the 5th of December, so it should be still very informative of what's to come. And the biggest news in the past week has been that Jupiter, uh, the plan of luck and expansion and good juju, has now gone into Capricorn, and this is a year-long transit, so it's not anything to sneeze about and it is your sixth house which is the house of health the house of work as opposed to the tenth house of career so the work itself is the sixth um and also pets so you know with the expansion angle maybe your dog or cat's going to give birth and you're going to keep the whole litter i don't know <laughs> but the other possibilities are that you are going to have more work than you know what to do with. And if we kind of, you know, take that to its conclusion, it could be that you are uh, more, uh, that you're earning more money than you did last year or something like that. So it's not isolated as working more. It's also earning more. Um, and... The, Jupiter joins a crowded field in that sixth house. You've had quite a uh, a long, you know, multi planet or point points hanging out in the sixth house, and gotta say this is a general reading because uh, with a lot of the astrologers these days, they use and I use the unequal house system. So that means that you can have two, sometimes I think like three house, you know, three uh, signs can be within one house. And um, the point being that everyone does not experience the same transits in the same way as their fellow uh, sun sign or rising sign person. So and, you know, the timing may be different for everybody. So the point is, that I'm trying to make, is that I can't say for sure if all of these planets that I'm about to mention or these points are in your sixth house currently. But um, just in a general sense, there's Pluto in Capricorn since January of 2008. There's Saturn in Capricorn since December of 2017. You have the South Node in that uh, sixth house since probably about, I think it's been about uh, uh, 13 months now, since about November of 2018. And these are all heavy hitters in their own right. And now we have this breath of fresh air, this sense of relief, having... Um, Jupiter, because Jupiter is the life of the party. And you're the life of the party, Leo, come to think of it. Um, you know, this may be one of those situations where some Leos are left scratching their heads. And, you know, if you have like Capricorn rising, or maybe even the moon in Capricorn, Leo, if, if Leo is your sun sign, you may be, or vice versa, if, you're, if your sun is in Capricorn and Leo is rising, you may be like, what the actual, you know, what has been going on? Because usually Leos are very um, fun-loving and, you know, larger than life, always up for a good time. And you may have been feeling a bit defeated, a bit restricted. And when it comes to work matters, or in some cases, health matters, you may have felt that things have been tough. And just to, you know, in terms of the South Node, the South Node is leaving the sign of um, 
the south node is even the sign of Capricorn in May. And so that, and it will go into a more friendly angle when it goes in, you know, a sign that's friendlier to you because then it's going to go um, into Sag. And uh, so there you go. Even though it's the south node, it's not really the focus. It still is part of the the whole um, influence. So we have to talk about it in those terms. But um, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I just wanted to state that you have a lot on your plate with that sixth house. But at least now there's a bit of relief. And, oh, and, and Saturn is going to leave... Uh, uh, Capricorn in March, but I think it's going to retrograde back into Capricorn, um, if, you know, co you know, pretty soon afterwards. So you're going to have, uh, Saturn in that sixth house for probably the rest of the year. And so, you know, that's some, I'm, I'm talking about 2020, even when I say the rest of the year, um, so just utilize the Saturn energy in a good way, in a constructive way, because Saturn is constructive. It's about, you know, being very um, sober and disciplined and, uh, you know, not, not being sloppy, not taking shortcuts, doing things the right way. Well, the sixth house can be anything from building your schedule to the type of work that you're doing. And I would even say, even though this is nothing to do with um, the sixth house specifically, but I would include training with this because it's all about becoming the best version of yourself in the service that you'll offer others. And um, in any case, so Jupiter is, is in that sector, joining those other points and plant, you know, planets and points. And then on the ninth, Mercury goes into Sagittarius out of its, on the ninth of um, December, it's out of its shadow from the retrograde a day before that on the eighth. So now Mercury is completely out of the woods and you can feel that sense of forward movement. And we're talking about an area that you rule, the fifth house. So that's actually a very good thing because the sun is here until the solstice time. And what this means is that with the sun in this sector, um, that's what I should have started out with talking about that because that may give you a little bit of your old gumption <laughs> for lack of a better word, where, you know, you're, you're kind of your fun loving self, which is the fifth house pleasure, you know, just fun, enjoyment, creativity, love. Um, now you have Mercury in that fifth house. Well, for some people who are artistic, this may be a writing situation, poetry, uh, creative writing, uh, scripts, you know, for theater. This can be, of course, books, but uh, with the fifth house, I also think of um, the creative self-expression, even like on a performance level, because of how Leo is so show-offy and extroverted. And um, also, you may be talking to somebody that you are crushing on, that you really um, have feelings for. On the 11th or 12th, depending on where you live in the world, we have a full moon, 19 degrees of Gemini. This is going to be in your 11th house of hopes and wishes. Also friendships. If it's friendships, if there's something going on with friendships, you may have reached the limit uh, with your cur current with a current friend, maybe you've reached the uh, tolerance level. Uh, they finally are on your ignore list now. 
after they did one thing too many. Um, or you just realize you've outgrown your friends. And this is not just for people who are college age. You've had a long time transit of Neptune in the eighth house of metaphysics in Pisces. And some Leo people may have had, you know, very unusual um, spiritual experiences that may, I'm talking about psychic experiences actually, but that may involve people who have crossed over or you just have developed this very devout um, connection with a certain type of, um, you know, like, like the astrology, the tarot and things like that, those kinds of, um, me medium mediums to access spiritual knowledge. And for those of you who, who do see yourself, this would be, uh, since, at least 2011, I think that's when Neptune went into Pisces. I keep on to saying 2012. I think it was 11, but regardless, you know, definitely this, it's been years now. And the point being that this can be something that, that has made you much more sensitive, much more aware of other dimensions and much less willing to tolerate um, nonsense, uh, trivialities, and just, you know, the typical social life. You may feel much more inside of yourself and not in a bad way. So that may be a culmination or a realization that you have. You go out on the town and then you witness them and you realize that they're dragging you down, that they're just not, yeah, or it could just be like that they're not supportive. It can be a situation where um, you realize a long held dream. You know, this is the long range goals sector and that can be very gratifying as well. On the 20th, Venus goes into Aquarius, your opposite sign. So it's going to be in that seventh house. So that can be some kind of um, truce if there has been some kind of like issue between you and your spouse, you and your, your significant other. This can be just like, you know, like you're kind of extending an olive branch or they are. Um, this can be a lawsuit, like if you're, if you've had any kind of a lawsuit issue, um, the money part of it may be coming through and it's like, Hey, you know, you can do this. You can have this. Um, on the 21st, we have the solstice, the sun goes into Capricorn um, so again, we're talking about that area that's very practical, the sixth house. Um, this makes you more, you know, cause the sun is your basic personality. So Leo, you may be getting down to brass tacks and we haven't even gotten into the, um, the full holiday, um, spiel yet. A few days later, there's a solar eclipse in this house at four degrees of Capricorn. So we just had Jupiter go into Capricorn and therefore Jupiter is right there at this eclipse at five degrees. So it's forming a conjunction. But what makes this even more interesting is that Uranus is right there too at two degrees of Taurus. So for you, Leo, this is your 10th house of career. So these two areas are activated, the sixth and 10th houses. That is great because it could mean like uh, some sort of career opportunity that comes your way in a almost seemingly random way. 
Uranus is very unpredictable, so it can come out of left field. But because Jupiter is there, there's a, there's luck attached to it, like a lucky break. So an example would be um, you're an aspiring actress and you are working as a uh, understudy in, in a theater troupe. And it's almost like a, it's like a sixth house thing because you're just kind of like paying your dues. It's, it's almost like drudgery. It's, it's, it's almost like, uh, being in boot camp or something where you have three shows a night. You're just like really, um, having a lot of, um, experience, getting a lot of experience under your belt, but in a way that is very, um, eh, you know, I could say brutal, but you know, um, demanding. Okay. And then, you know, that the, I think that has happened before where the understudy happens to go on stage and they become the hit. And that is the, that's the kind of thing where it's one of those f- so-called flukes. If you believe in flukes, if you believe that things just randomly happen, I don't, I think that they're destined to happen, but regardless, um, it's fun and exciting all the same. And actually, you know, that brings up the fact that your north, your transing north node is in Cancer in that 12th house. So that's uh, a karmic placement, uh, you know, a place for it to be transiting. But the, the north node is your destiny. So it's kind of like in some cases that something was destined to happen just at this point, you know, in your life. And that nothing could have stopped it from happening. That it was just meant to be. And yet, it may seem like totally unpredictable. Like nothing you could have ever imagined. I mean, both of those things are possible. Because the universe made a way. You know, you were meant to experience this. It was like kind of a blossoming of sorts. So that's very exciting. And then on the 28th, uh, well, I'll just say for other people, anything that if, if you've been kind of not sure what your path is, Leo, this could open the way for that. In other words, because, um, a solar eclipse like a lunar eclipse is change, a change agent. And sometimes the fixed signs like Leo tend to be a bit stodgy. They tend to be a bit set in their ways, even if they're fun, even if they have a lot, uh, even if they're not old fashioned and they're kind of, you know, they, they try to stay, um, relevant, you know, with the current times, there can be still that reluctance to embrace new experiences and kind of stick to the tried and true. So this may mean that the South Node, which is all about that, is definitely a temptation to avoid. Since it's in your sixth house, you may gravitate towards the same type of work because it's something that you feel that you're good at without necessarily exploring other avenues that are much more, um, that you have a much greater affinity for, but it's not as sure a thing. And usually I would say in the creative arts, that's going to certainly be the case. Um, even though Leos can be very confident, those who are born with inner planets, well, the moon can be any sign. Um, so with the moon sign, you know, you might be born with the moon in Capricorn or um, Cancer, Taurus, certain, certain signs like that. You may be reluctant to do things that, that ha- seem very, um, uh, unsure of the, of the possibility of success. And in, you know, a lot of, um, Leos probably have at least one inner planet in, in, um, cancer because it's a sign adjacent to you. So that likewise can happen where, you have Mars in Cancer or Venus or Mercury. And I'm beginning to think that Mercury 
is really important. And, you know, I think sometimes it gets neglected because that's how you think. So you could act like a Leo, but think like a, a cancer and be very security minded and it can affect what you, what you decide to do. So these change agents, these eclipses can kind of knock you, you know, you know, blow out the, you know, cobwebs and, and help to clear a path to let you see, you know, what you might need to do or, you know, what you would be, what you're destined to do. And, um, so especially for those Leos who are unsure of themselves, this could be a good uh, situation too. And then on the 28th, Mercury goes into Capricorn and that's going to also, this is going to make you more interested in the, um, diet. Um, Mercury rules that sixth house and can be about research and, and also about like paying attention to diet, health matters, um, maybe some kind of contract that needs to be signed that's connected to work. So perhaps you were job hunting and you got off an offer and you're filling out all the paperwork at the end of, of December, which is nice because then you're going to celebrate the new year knowing that you have a new job. It's like starting fresh in the new year. Um, or any kind of just discussion, you know, putting out resumes and, and doing paperwork that's associated with places of employment that could be going on for you, uh, in the last week of the month. Okay. Leo, that sounds really good to me. I like that kind of mixture between fun and more practical things. And I hope that, uh, you're excited about uh, what's to come. If you would like to see what's to come in 2020, uh, some of the trends for you, I have an extended reading with a, a sale on that uh, using your actual natal chart. Um, the offer is listed below this video and you can click on the link to see some of my other offerings as well. I hope you have a great, fun month of December. Take care, Leo. Bye.